if you looked at the schedule earlier, Martin Hayes' talk was uh, uh, called Short. And we've uh, updated to a much more exciting title, Whoa. Code Dangerously with Naked Death. Ooh. Martin, take it away. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, my original presentation was actually all written before Kansas Fest. And then, of course, Ivan had all these great ideas. And it turned into a completely different presentation. <laughs> but I, I, much superior, I think. Um, Again, I'll be using my, my weird uh, presentation software. Last year was Weakness Point Plus, which was like 30 or 40 bytes. Uh, this year's Weakness Point Minus, which is only 8 bytes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> it boots in about 10 seconds, because that's how fast I type. So we're going to be talking about coding dangerously. And a system that Ivan calls Naked Dev, and I think it's a great name. So first, what does it mean to code dangerously, and why would you want to? This is going to be a theme throughout the talk. Danger is good. I'll talk about this, the system which Supermon 2.0 uh, embodies, essentially, now. Um, including a new programming language called Short. Does this have anything to do with contraception? Uh, contraception, no. <laughs> Um, and then there's Ivan's secret sauce, which is a special surprise for Kansas Fest and had me up coding until midnight last night, which means that it'll probably crash. Um, so just be prepared for horrible things to happen during this presentation. And then finally, I'll, I'll discuss the entire package um, altogether and some miscellaneous little things about it. So, coding should be fun. Programming should be fun. And for me, I, I like a lot of people, started on my Apple II just playing games. Games are fun because there's danger of dying or failing. Um, programming needs, from, in my opinion, danger to be fun. Um, I program for my day job, too, and I don't want that same kind of programming when I'm programming at night or at Kansas Fest. On my MacBook, there's very little risk that anything's going to happen to my code. My computer hasn't crashed in years. You know, I've got Dropbox keeping backups of my files everywhere. It's so safe. You're tempting fate. Which is good for productivity, but... Sorry, what? You're tempting fate by saying your MacBook hasn't crashed in years. I probably am. It'll probably crash during this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that in order to live dangerously. Yeah, exactly. There you go. One of the most boring things about programming an assembly language on the Apple II is using assemblers and compilers or programming in C on the Apple II or Pascal. Um, and the main reason it's boring is, that, is the giant time gap. You write your code, you compile it, you save it, you switch to your dev environment, you load your code, you run it, blah, blah, blah. It's horrible. Um, that's just like my day job, but in slow motion. So AppleSoft is kind of fun because it gives you instant feedback. You type in a line, you hit run, it goes. Um, but it definitely has some disadvantages. For one thing, it's slow, so you can't, I mean, you can write a game in it, but there's not a lot of games you can write in it. Um, it is pretty safe, which isn't necessarily a good thing in this context. Um, it's also actually hard 
to make a really big Applesoft program. You know, when you when you want to add more levels to your game, or just you know add more features, you get this giant mess. Even if you're using structured Applesoft and being really religious about it, it's still hard to do in Applesoft. On the other hand, assembly language is super powerful, right? Mainly because it's just blazing fast. But So boring. And it's also pretty tedious to, to write anything large. So we need to mash these two together. And that's what Naked Dev is all about. The first thing is, how do we get some kind of Applesoft-like thing that's kind of easy to code in, a little bit safer than assembly, not so tedious. Um, and so I came up with the programming language short. And uh, I will show it to you soon. And let, but first, let's kind of discuss its features so you know what you're looking at. Um, this is a general purpose language. It's got some high level features. It's not super high level, but it's got some. Um, it's kind of like AppleSoft. It would be you know, fairly easy for an AppleSoft programmer to learn and start using short. Um, like everything I write in this environment, it's it's small. Um, the runtime for short is only 1K, so it leaves lot, you know, it leaves tons of room in memory for your other stuff, your game graphics, whatever. Um, it's relatively concise, especially compared to assembly. Um, it has some structured programming features, which makes it um, much easier to build a large complicated program incrementally. You build pieces, you modularize, you refactor, you build bigger pieces, you build bigger and bigger pieces. Um, it's roughly twice as fast as AppleSoft, um, mostly because of efficiencies in the interpreter and because it does not do floating point. It's 16-bit integer variables only. Um, I specifically designed it so that programs you write in short, the same program will occupy less bytes in memory than an AppleSoft program or an assembly program. Um, sometimes assembly can be a smaller, but obviously a lot harder to write. Um, this is an interpreted language, so that means you get uh, instant leaven. <laughs> Just you type stuff in, you go. You type some more stuff in, you go. It crashes. You type some more stuff, you erase your program, you reload from disk. It's fun, it's interactive, it's dangerous. And if you're an AppleSoft programmer, uh, short is basically the gateway drug to assembly language on the Apple II. You can start writing in short. Um, you can you can be like, I want to re rewrite just this one line in assembly. Short is great for that. Uh, here's some more features, some some kind of details. You can totally mix short code with 6502 code. There's, there's no transition. You just interleave one after the other. So you can write a bunch of short, put some assembly, write some more short. Um, that's really nice, especially if you're learning assembly. Uh, 
uh, short has local variables, so a f when you write a function and it has functions, um, they can they can protect other functions from what they're doing. They can kind of hide their private stuff and keep it private, so they don't step on everybody else's variables. Um, you can pass parameters to functions. You can call functions from functions, etc. So you know these are very concepts like C or Pascal or Java. Um, so it's got a bunch of 16-bit math ops built in. You know, multiply, divide, modulo, um, bit shifting operators. You know, logical and XOR, all that kind of stuff is built in. So you don't have to write your own multiply in assembly language, which is probably pretty good. Um, it has basic support for arrays and structs. So basically an array is an array of 16-bit words. A struct is an array of bytes in, in shorts parlance. Um, it's fully integrated into Supermon, so you can code you code just the way you code in Supermon. And so the same commands work for um, creating a line of code, moving code around, uh, resizing lines of code, searching to find out where did I use that variable? Well, Supermon can tell you where you used that variable. Is, is, is there any branch to this memory location? Supermon can tell you that. Um, it has some additional features for readability of short code. Um, of course, you can use long names. AppleSoft gives you a whopping two characters for your variable names and two characters for the name of a defined function. Um, in Supermind, you can have up to nine. Um, and in short, you can actually add comments to your program to make them as readable as you want them to be. Uh, short has a built-in library. Uh, functions, so you can print a string, you can print a decimal number, you can do, you know, you can format some output to put a decimal number in the middle of a string. You can copy memory around. Um, it's got a looping construct, kind of like for i equals 1 to 10, similar. Um, you can write spaghetti code if you want to with if true and if not, and there's several other th library functions. I tried to keep it small. It still only fits in 1K. So there's not a lot of the library functions, but what's there is pretty general purpose. Almost every program is going to want almost all of those functions. Can you build your own library? You can build your own library. You can read the code for these functions and base your code off these functions. You can, because it's in Supermind, if you don't like the names of these functions, you can rename them too. Um, but yes, you can and should build your own library because everybody needs something different. Obviously, in one case, some things are left out. I'm not going to go through an exhaustive list of all the things that BASIC does. The short doesn't, but you can probably figure it out. All right, now we come to the dangerous part of my presentation, demo. So... So, this is Supermod 2.0. Uh, it also has a new version of Naked DOS, minor uh, improvements to Naked DOS. Um, let's, let's create a little program here. I'll clear out some memory at uh, location 6000. I'm going to write an assembly program first, and then I'm going to go into demonstrating short. Um, so this is like a little refresher on what Supermod does and how it, how it does it. So it has assembly built in. You just start typing. Uh, you prefix each line with a space. You can list out your program. 
Anybody want to hazard a guess as to what this program does? Shit. The program's gone. <laughs> the program overrode itself. This is just a tiny example of how you can get in trouble writing code. And that's good. So here's the danger <laughs> that you will overwrite your own code, that your disk will go bad, that um, you'll relocate something and it and it breaks all of your branches. You know, there's there's Why do your labels start with G instead of A? Say again? Why do your labels start with G instead of A? Yeah, um, because A through F are hex numbers, ah, gotcha. whereas G isn't. Okay. So that's why the labels start with that. And in Supermon, you can use any of these labels. So I can do 6000 L to list. Or there are these shortcuts on the screen, dash G through dash Z. And you can use those instead as a number. So that just helps. Yeah. Really, it's a, it's a typing saver and an accuracy increaser. All right, well, let's try to make a program that does not crash. So I've cleared that out. Let's see. There we go. So here's an example of using that dash label. All right, what's this program going to do? Mm -hmm. Print out a bunch of numbers. One through eight, I guess. <laughs> I'd really rather have it print out one through nine. There we go. And I'd really like to have a space in between. Or no, maybe I want them each on their own line. So I want to, after I print out the byte, I want to print out a carriage return. So I can just insert at 6006i. So Supermon has just moved everything around in my program to give me one extra byte at 6006. There's a monitor routine called CR out that it will output every carriage return. What just happened? That's three bytes. Supermon pushed the rest of the program down to make room for that thing I just typed. So I could go type a whole bunch of stuff. This. And Supermon just keeps pushing down the program to make room for what I'm typing. And there's still the break there? The Did break is still there. When I'm done, I use the close command to close up that space, and I've got a new program. Nice. Uh, not a great program, but whatever. <laughs> that shows you just a little bit of the editing capabilities in Supermon. Um, you can make some labels. So... Let's call 6002 my loop. Now I've got a label. And you'll notice that at the end, when it does B and E, Supermon recognizes, oh, you're branching to a label. I'll print out the label's name. So you can work with, with words that make sense to people instead of numbers that are hard to remember. Um, Like I said, we can search for things, so where did I use loop? Oh yeah, it was at 6011. So Supermind can search your program and tell you things like that, which is really useful when you're A, coming back here later and trying to figure out what you did, <coughs> or B, just trying to refactor your code. Is this thing you used anywhere? Maybe I could just delete it. Okay. Superman output to printer. Sure, you can do one control P. Okay and start printing things. Okay. Sure. Um, and then let's save our work.
So here's naked DOS. Um, I'll make a new file and I'll write out the contents of memory to it. Okay, and now my thing is saved. That's kind of the, the cycle in Supermind. You write a little code, you run it, you write some more code, you run it, you save it. It's kind of like saving your game. It's dangerous. If you don't save your game, you might lose what you did. Um, that's Supermon in a nutshell. Now let's introduce Short to this mix. I'll blow away that label that I just made. All right, now I got empty space again. Um, let's do Hello World. So first we have to load the short runtime. It usually lives at 1C00. You can relocate it anywhere you want, because Supermon can relocate anything anywhere. Um, but that's where it starts. Now that I've loaded that, I can start, start typing short code. So here's my little program. That's Hello World in short. So let's do a little more complicated program. Let's um, clear it out again. So let's make a variable. We'll call it number. And we'll stick it on zero page at location 80. Um, Superman gives you lots of space for your variables. More than half of zero page is empty. Um, way more than half of memory, of main memory is empty. Um, so you can put variables anywhere you want. Um, let's assign it a value. And then let's make a little loop. Uh, what did I do wrong? Pardon me, I loaded the wrong disk. Danger of demos. Shoot. Oh, I know. I have short dev somewhere else. There we go. All right, we'll make a loop. Um, we can print out that number, and then we'll end our loop. So, so we're setting the number to one, we're starting a loop, we're printing out the number is, and then percent D is like C. Um, that tells, you, tells it, I want to print a decimal number here. Uh, caret M is a, is a return character. And then we're going to loop while we're can stepping the number from can one. Can go full screen again? Say again? Can we go full screen? Sorry. We're stepping the number, uh, adding one to it, and when we reach 10, we'll stop. So there's our, our little program. Nice and concise. Um, we can add a comment. Yeah, it is. Is it possible that number equals one is taking up what, four or five, five bytes? How is it possible that number equals one is taking up well, five bytes? Well, can you can you can you get it to list what what the underlying code is? Sure. Let's <laughs> blow away. Let's blow away the short runtime. So now Superman 
think so. I guess this is just 6502 code. Here's the, fir the first five bytes are JSR to set W, which is a short library function that sets a variable. Okay. The next byte is the encoding for zero page address 80, which is our number. Right. And then the next byte is the encoding for the number one. And that's it. And then next is two zero, so that's another JSR to another routine. Okay. So every statement in short is just a JSR to some right. short function. Right. Where does it keep track of the variable name? The Where does it keep track of the variable names? Um, it's kept track of in system, uh, sorry, Supermon's um, symbol table, which is stored up in the language card, um, and it's it's saved on your disk in two files, sim table one and sim table two. And when you save a program, it also writes the symbol table to disk. Um, so that's where the symbols are. What if you have multiple programs on a disk and therefore require multiple symbol tables or uses one? I typically keep one program on each disk okay. so that I don't get mixed up with symbol tables. Okay. But I am, um, let's see, I'm writing a utility. I have not finished it for this demo, but this is the right disk. Yeah. Whoop! Let's load short. That's not short. Ew, this disk is messed up. Let's go back to the other one. This is what I get for hacking at midnight. <laughs> there we go. Um, so this is the largest short program that's ever been written. <laughs> um, yeah, and it doesn't even work. Anyway, wow, that's messed up. Um, I'm writing utility to allow you to copy files with their symbols from one disk to another. So you could build a library over here and then a library over on another disk, and then combine the two on one disk. Um, and I'll be releasing that, you know, probably in a month or so. Um, I just didn't have time to finish it during KFest. Uh, what else can I show you? Here's a, a smaller program to compute prime numbers from 3 to 2,000. So you can see you can put comments in, you can use uh, nested loops if you want to. Loops just use the stack. Um, typically, like in a lot of other programs, you use like X or I as your loop variables. One of the oddities of Superman is that all variables have to be at least three characters so that they're distinguishable from commands. Mm. So, um, so I typically use III and JJJ for loop counters. Um, oh my god, this code actually runs. Yay, it's a miracle. <laughs> I'm living dangerously, you know. Yeah, it's learning. All right, there's the prime numbers less than 2,000. And as you can see, it's a pretty short program. This same program, which I did write in assembly, was 15 times faster and required eight pages to list out. So, and may, you know, maybe it wasn't the best assembly language, but it's pretty good. Um, so this is just much more concise. So basically, when you have a, a task, and there are lots of tasks where you don't need the blazing speed of assembly language, you can write it in short, and then you can rewrite the parts that need to be fast in assembly language. And you can mix and match. And, and you can just mix those in. So. So you could insert 
just arbitrary 6502, like right in the middle of that code? Sure. Oops. So let's print out a carriage return after each number. I see. So if you wanted to refer to like III, how would you would you would you how do you do that transfer that into the accumulator or something? Or into assembly language? Yeah. Easy. <coughs> so let's print it out in hex. And III is a sixty is a sixteen bit number, right? It is a 16-bit number. Um, so let's load the lower bits into the X register and the upper bits into the A register. And then there's a monitor routine that prints out A and X. So it's assumed to be an uh, immediate value. Say again? You did load, load X, I, 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 so it assumes. Uh, it's no, it's actually that's a zero page reference. Okay. I, I is a variable on zero page. To to do immediate, you stick a pound symbol in front of it. So now we'll get each number in decimal and hex. And short has and and supermon treat so then supermon treats either short or. A variable is a variable that you can use either in your 6502 context or your short context. Right. You can use variables in either place. Um, there's nothing particularly special except they're two bytes. Um, and if you don't care about the upper byte, you can ignore it in your assembly code. In, in that example code, were there two, were, was it a nested loop or were they separate loops? I'm trying to understand where, where you just define the end, the block of that. Uh, let me delete the code that we just inserted so that this will all fit on one screen. Um, so here is the beginning of our outer loop, and it's over III. And let's see. Here's the beginning of our inner loop. So loops always start with loop and end with while. So here's the end of our inner loop. So this is basically a, a loop over JJJ setting um, things in an array. And then here's the end of our outer loop, which steps by twos, because we know that all even numbers are not prime, um, and stops at 2,000. Okay. Um, I've got some code that's not working to actually uh, indent this. I was going to ask. Uh, so that you can really tell which where your loops are nested. I um, haven't got that working either. It's in short 1.1. Short two point or Superman two point one. <laughs> Other questions about this code? Um, on three oh at three oh seventy seven, that's if tr is that an array there? The the bracket does that indicate an, an array? That indicates that p buff is an array, right? And that you're you want to uh, set the i i i i member of it or you're checking the i member of it. And if it's true, you'll branch to this label. Cool. Of course, I'm using this bracket because it's the only one you can type on an Apple II Plus keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the operator for logical or is not a pipe symbol because you can't type that, so it's an at sign. Um, all the other operators are pretty standard C operators. In the uh, if that if, if in the if statement, if the the go to um, line number were off screen, I guess it would show the address instead. It would tell you, yeah. It would just show the address, or if it was a label, it would tell you the label. Okay. But yeah. Um, and and what if the line is too long to get? What if the line is longer than forty columns? <laughs> That just get truncated when you list it's wrap. What happens? Just wraps. All right. 
All right, let's talk about This is what I was doing at midnight last night. <coughs> and let's just see if it works. It either does or it doesn't. Tautology. All right, so I booted into Protoss. Now, let's get the right disk. One point nine is the last version of it. Yeah, I, I know that. At least I assume it does. Okay. So now we're back in Superman. You can tell we're on Superman. We're in Naked DOS. Um, now we're in ProDOS. Six five? Nine. Now we're in Superman. So I can write a program. <coughs> All right, so it prints out an ASCII table. And then I can go over to Prodos. And run it. Nice. Or B save it, or whatever you want to do. You could never do this with Su Superman before. Superman was naked dust is the entire world. Um, there is a bigger world. Sometimes you want to integrate with a ProDOS program. You want to write a little subroutine for your basic program. You can just now switch back and forth between um, Superman, which is an awesome, totally optimized programming environment, and, and then switch over to the other world, where basic <coughs> is the world and hard disks are giant. And you can, so then you can just use Superman to the fact that it's married to Naked DOS is, is incidental. You can use it as a development tool for any ProDOS app. Right. You can just use it as a development tool if that's what you want. And you can ignore the presence of Naked DOS if you feel like it. Superman needs Naked DOS, of course, to operate, but you don't have to worry about it. Are you going to round trip with DOS 3.3 also? You can't yet, but the code is very similar. If I had another midnight to work, it would work with DOS 3.3 as well. Okay, so oh, I, d I lost weakness point. Give me nine seconds. Will <laughs> <laughs> you be publishing the source code to this uh, new uh, presentation program? I will. I will be publishing it. Okay, so. Superman 2.0 kind of ties this all up. <laughs> into one integrated development environment. So on the disk, there's the short runtime, there's short programming support, uh, there's, ex there's extensive um, on disk help for both Superman and for short, and I'll, I'll show you that briefly in a second. Um, there's um, miscellaneous new stuff in Superman 2.0 and, and, and in Naked DOS. The biggest new Naked DOS feature is that it can access uh, multiple drives in any slot. Um, that's the biggest thing. Oh, and if you hit reset while it's doing something, you're not totally screwed. 
Now all the features of Superman and Naked Arms and stuff, that's all documented, correct? That's all documented. Uh, well, as documented as I could get it before this presentation. Um, I should point out that on a Superman disc, if you don't want the help files, delete them. If you're not, if you don't want short, delete it. Superman will just whine if you try to use those features. Um, and one miscellaneous feature that's worth mentioning is uh, Superman now does hex to decimal conversion and back, so you don't have to get out your calculator or switch to your Mac or whatever to, to do that. Um, as always, there is absolutely no Apple code included on the disk. Um, I wrote this entirely on a 2 plus or an emulated 2 plus with the exception of switching back and forth from ProDOS, which had to be done on a 2E emulated. And that's why I'm running this presentation on an emulated 2E as opposed to the real 2 plus. Um, the license is CC0. And the layman's version of CC0 is use this however you want. I don't care. It's yours. Make money on it. Put your name on it. I don't care. Whatever. And uh, uh, it's online at Bitbucket. Um, 2.0, there is a release disk there. It's kind of buggy. There will be a 2.1 soon, but you can play with it. It's there. Um, the and documentation is there, too. Hmm? Documentation is there, too. Documentation is there, too. Whoops. Whoops. Whoa. Call minus 51. Well, that break you never done. One dangerous <laughs> thing after another. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, let me show you the help system. If I can boot the right disk here. So here's Superman's help. Not a lot has changed. Um, I've you know, added documentation for the new commands and so forth. Naked DOS is documented here. And the license. If you hit enter, you get the help index for short. Um, an overview of the features and the rationale. Um, some basics of how to write a short program, hello world, etc. Using variables, flow control, making loops. Um, I didn't cover making functions, but this tells you how to make a function, like to compute the square of a number. Um, so you just do def, give your function a name, which just assigns a label in Superman. Tell it what parameters you want, up to three parameters. Um, and then do some calculations and end it with return. That's a function. Cool. It's primitive, but it works. Um, here's all the operators and how to type them, what they do. Here are all the library functions that are provided. Um, if you want to move short somewhere else in memory, this tells you how to do it. Um, this is kind of internal stuff, but you can write faster functions that don't name their parameters. Um, here's the areas of memory that you have to use and how to use them. And that's it. So, uh, lost it again. So, try it out if you're interested. Learn it. This would be awesome. Make a video <laughs> showing, showing other people how to use it. I'm going to try to do this, but, you know, I also have a day job and I have bugs to fix. <laughs> make a library for it. It doesn't do graphics at all. Make a graphics library. Make a floating point library if you're totally in a floating point, whatever. Are you going to document some of the internal structure to facilitate writing the library for it? Just write functions. There's nothing special to a library. Okay. Just a, it's just a collection of functions. And in fact, all of those built-in functions is just a collection of functions. So, but yeah, I guess I could, 
I could can say, those, here's how to write a can library. Can those libraries be listed? That must be the end of my presentation. <laughs> That's it. Oh. And this is part of my lifelong quest to write a game. And then we realized two days ago that I had already written a game two years ago and never released it. This is a terrible game. <laughs> <laughs> it's low res graphics. <laughs> it only has 10 levels. They're all random. It's written in, in basic, but it is a technology demo for an early version of Slammer. Um, it does use structured AppleSoft. Um, and I was really inspired by John Romero's speech. You know, it's like, we were turning out a game a month. And they weren't all good games. And who cares? So my lifelong ambition is done. I, <laughs> I am releasing this game. I'm selling it for a dollar a disc. <laughs> and I'll have it at the vendor fair. And that ambition is done. Okay. Um, is, I, think, I don't think there's time for questions on the back channel, probably. Huh? Take one or two. Okay. Are there any questions on the back channel? Let me check. Yeah, we forgot to announce that that session was back channel compatible. Okay. Which is Everybody. probably why there are no questions. Okay. Any questions before I go? Uh, when did you release this? When did I release this? <laughs> you, know I'm, you know I'm asking. Uh, about... Ten minutes ago? Ten hours ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About ten hours ago. <laughs> so it's a little rough. Have you gotten any sleep since? I did actually get some sleep, yeah. Oh. I got about five hours. All right, I got out of here. Thank you. All right, thanks.